Hi, my name is Lucilla Ronai and welcome to the Conservation Starter. So today we're going for part two of five things to do with your family photographs to make sure they last. So let's get started. So you're handling your photographs like a pro. Step number two is to work out what you have. So let's jump right in. I have a lot more to go through, but just with what I've got out now, I've got a newspaper clipping, I've got a paper with writing on it, and I've got lots of different types of photographs. The photographs themselves contain so much information in the images, people that are there, um, events, locations, um, relationships maybe to each other, but also dates and ages. So this is my grandma as a child versus her when I think she's in her 20s versus her later on in life. You can use things to look closer at your family objects. This is a textile loop. You can also get magnifying glasses and other things that can aid you to look at your photographs. You can even just use your phone and take a photo with it and zoom in and see details. If, For example, there might be some text in one of the photographs or some details that you just can't see and you want to see closer. You can also measure your objects if you want to know the shape and size. So there's lots of different ways you can ascertain information. One of the most important ways with photographs is to check on the back and see if there's any information written there. So this is what I was trying to find, uh, an inscription on the back with the date and an inscription on the back that says who's in the photo. So the great thing about these is it gives you information. Not all photographs will have this treasure trove of information on the back. For example, this one, I have no idea who's in this photograph and there is literally nothing written on the back of use. So this kind of information is amazing. Also, if you don't know who's in the photographs, you can actually go through a process to find out who they are. Something you can do to work out what you have is talk to your relatives and see if they know who's in the photographs. I had this really beautiful moment where I was going through family photographs with my grandma and she was telling me who was in all these photos that I didn't know. I thought fast and I started recording and so I have that information forever. And she was nice enough to say that I could play a little snippet for you now. That's me and your grandfather at a, at a fancy dress ball. It was at an officer's mess. I went as a high mate wayman. That was a real old pistol. Hopefully unloaded, yeah. And it was a New Year's Eve party. Is he holding a cigar? Yeah. So now I have to decide what I want to do with that information. For future generations, I could write that information on that photograph or record it elsewhere. Before you jump right in and start writing all over the back of your photographs, I do want to just say some things and some tips that you need to know. First of all, you don't want to use pen. They've used pen historically here and now, that's part of the object and that's fine. But conservatives, whatever we do, we want to make sure it's reversible. And this is a tip I'm going to pass on to you. So we use pencils because they are reversible and we can erase them after the fact for whatever reason. So you might have noticed on your pencil, usually it has a HB. We're wanting to go to softer, so either a B, a 2B, a 3B, or a 4B. So I've written that on with my 2B pencil, which is really soft. It's not a too hard a point. I did it really softly without much pressure so I don't leave an indent. And I also did it far away from any other information on the back of it. Because that means if I do erase it in the future, I'm not going to erase anything that was already there. Also, I made sure to do it away from any damage. For example, if I was doing it on this photograph, I wouldn't go anywhere near there was a tear or a crease or a fold. Because if I do erase it in the future, that could cause some damage. Conservatives use a Mars Stadler eraser to remove graphite that's not original. It is a rubber, sorry, it is an eraser that doesn't have many additives to it and it shouldn't change the paper over time. You do need to use this softly though. So that's an example of how you can label your photographs. While you're working out what you have, you can also look at the condition of your items. So for example, there's lots of tape here. The photograph here seems to have discolored and gone yellow, while this color photograph has actually, the color seems to have changed tone and also faded. There's losses on a lot of these photographs. There's tears and there's also creases and fold lines. 
A lot of this damage isn't reversible. You can't really do much to fix it other than just make sure you handle and store it well in the future. But things like tears and losses, someone could treat that for you and also definitely remove the tape. I do not recommend doing that yourself. You're probably just gonna cause way more damage. I'm gonna pop in the description below details of how to find a conservator. So if you do want your items treated, you can get a conservator to do it. It does cost money though. I'm gonna take a look at the back of these and see if I can find some dates. So there you have it. That is number two, how to look after your family photographs by identifying them. So join me for the next video, which will be in two weeks time. So to never miss a video, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And remember, keep on caring.